Hey, welcome in. I'm Amy. Thank you so much for joining me today. It really does always mean a lot to me whenever you take time out of your day to listen to one of my videos. And I'm really hopeful that today's video is super inspiring to you because I really wanted to take an approach that encouraged you to use the makeup that you already have instead of thinking about all the things that you need to go buy. So I did a get ready with me style video featuring this look, although it's the end of the day. I forgot to record my intro. And this look is featured in this video as a no brand tutorial. So throughout the video, I'm describing these products to you in hopes that it will encourage you to take a look to see if you can find something similar in texture, similar in formula, similar in consistency. Instead of thinking, ooh, I need to go buy that particular new foundation, I bet you already have a foundation that's super similar. I love talking about all things project panning and encouraging you to be a mindful consumer and to use the makeup that you already have or pass it along if you don't like it. Don't keep things you don't like. So if you like that kind of beauty content, I'd love for you to consider subscribing. Let's go back in time to the beginning of the day and a fresh faced me. So I got this idea of doing a no brand tutorial as a way to kind of promote using what you have instead of continuing to always go out and buy, buy, buy new things. So in me describing the products that I'm using today, instead of telling you what it is, which I will have listed in the description box below as a cheat sheet, but as I'm going through, just, just know that you probably already have something like what I am using and take that approach anytime that you're watching beauty content because the chances are that you have something similar already. That new foundation is not going to change your life. It's not going to make you look that snatched or that gorgeous. It's really not. <laughs> I bet you have something else that you can use instead of spending money on something new. Right now, what I just put on was a pore filling primer that I am trying to use up. And I used it in combination with this foundation that I'm going to put on yesterday. And it really looked very nice. And in the spirit of the video of not buying anything new, instead of wearing my headbands that my daughter has been wearing when she puts on her makeup, and it's super dirty and it's not very aesthetically pleasing for a thumbnail or whatever, I decided to put this on. So sometime today or sometime this week, I'll get her to kind of try to clean that off and that will save me from having to go buy it another one because that one's totally fine it's just dirty my next step is going to be to use this foundation that I have this is my second or third bottle of this foundation in my lifetime since its creation and this foundation is a medium to full coverage foundation that is easily buildable but I don't usually build it up too much to where it's like you know majorly full coverage I really like this foundation because it's a pretty good shade match for me right now and it is very affordable this foundation costs used to cost five dollars but now it costs six dollars so this is a drugstore foundation that again has a really great coverage really nice finish on my skin. It leaves my skin feeling slightly tacky, but not like not too much. And it leaves a nice slight glow, like nothing, nothing too like overly shiny because I do have a lot of hydrating things as my skincare underneath. However, my skin still looks pretty nice and I will probably set it just a little bit and for me, I'm someone that kind of likes to use, I'm showing you these, I kind of like to use a brush and a sponge, especially with this one. I find that really kind of helps to continue to press it into my skin and help it to become one with my skin. So the next step that we're going to go into is concealer. 
I try to not fault any kind of concealer with its efficacy based on my under eyes, which have dark circles and bags. I have a lot of discoloration on my eyelids and I have some pretty deep caverns right here at my nose. So I know that concealers can only do so much and I, I give them all sort of a sliding scale kind of thing. This concealer that I am using though is one that is more expensive. So my makeup collection is really starting to kind of evolve from prestige makeup that are luxury, not luxury, prestige makeup that I've gotten on sale or with Ulta Points to a combination of those kinds of products and also drugstore products. I've really been enjoying that this year of, of finding things that I like at the drugstore and kind of proving to myself that drugstore makeup really can be just that good especially makeup that I'm finding at the Dollar Tree. <laughs> the Dollar Tree has this brand called Ioni and that stuff is always so, so good. So, so good. Okay, so this concealer that I use is a pretty medium to full coverage concealer. It does a really good job of not getting too deep into my fine lines. So it doesn't like sink into my fine lines a whole, whole lot. And it does a really good job of like getting into those caverns and just kind of brightening those up. And I can show you a little trick that I do later on after I have my eye makeup. I'll show you a little trick that I do sometimes when those caverns are like really, really dark. That concealer is really nice for someone like me who has a lot of lines and um, you know, discoloration and bumps and grooves and valleys within my eye socket area because it's covering, but it's not super heavy. So that is something that if you are my age or not, and you do have a lot of similar characteristics of your eye sockets, then I would definitely say look for something like that. Look for something that's medium to full coverage, but lightweight in its texture. In an effort to show you something that I'm really liking from the Dollar Tree, so I will tell you that it comes from the Dollar Tree. This bronzer looks super scary in the pan because it's super, super dark, but it doesn't apply super dark when you're actually putting it on. I know that that looks really dark, but in real life, it doesn't. Like when I'm looking here in my mirror, it doesn't look that dark. So you're seeing something a little extra. The thing, one of the things that I like about this, besides the price, is that it has a little bit of a red tint to it. And I like that in a bronzer because that's what my skin, as the one who's like kind of, I'm very pale, um, that's what my skin does when I get out in the sun. So it's not a contour at all. It is a bronzing step for me that will help me to be able to um, look like I have a little bit of color to my skin. This is also nice and blendable. Even though it's very, very pigmented, it's nice and blendable. So very smooth and will, will you know, create that look that you're wanting. If you are someone that puts bronzer on, it will create that look that you're wanting for a super cheap price. So this is another one of those examples of things that I have been so excited to find at the drugstore. I'm gonna do my eyebrows off camera and then I'm gonna talk to you about what I'm using. And I'm gonna do it off camera because you're gonna be able to obviously see what I'm using. I wanted to do my brows first because I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do with my eyes. So I want to wait to put my blush on. For my eyebrows, I used two different products. One that's affordable and one that can be found at a store that's usually not super affordable. So the eyebrow pencil that I used is something that I've had for probably two years now and it's still 
going. I'm almost finished with it. I'm hoping that I'll finish it this year, but I honestly really don't know. This eyebrow pencil is one of the fatter eyebrow pencils, so it doesn't do like the super fine hair strokes, which I'm okay with because really I just need like some patchwork sort of right here at the front of my eyebrows and then just a little bit of extra down at the bottom. This eyebrow pencil, again, has been lasting me forever and it was very, very affordable. So I really like that about it. And I feel like the shade match is really, really good for me. And I think that's the most important thing about an eyebrow pencil is you find a brand and a range of colors that fits your eyebrow color and you stick with that. You don't have to go out and try every new eyebrow pencil if you find one that really works for you. And the gel that I used is something that I'm finding I really am loving because the eyebrow gel that I used is something that I do like because it has a really good setting factor and it's clear so it doesn't add any more color to my eyebrows. I prefer that because I don't want my eyebrows to be like super, super dark. I, I, I don't want it to be like, I still want it to look kind of natural. So I don't want to put like a pencil and a colored gel within my eyebrows. So I like having that medium hold kind of eyebrow feel, clear gel, and not having a whole bunch of like extra within your eyebrow to have like clumps, white clumps of things. Now we're going to get into the fun part and I'll probably do my blush and mascara last. Next step for me is always eyeshadow primer. I am someone that has oily, I guess, oily eyelids. At, mm, eyeshadow will fall off of my eyes and somehow magically disappear if I do not have a primer on. And the eyeshadow primer that I find is the most reliable the most affordable, I can really count on it to work with a wide variety of eyeshadows from the cheapest to the most expensive that I have. And it is really, really good. The only thing that I would change about it is maybe that if it had a little bit of more coverage, because I'm someone, again, that has a lot of color on my eyelids, it would be nice if it also had a little bit of coverage too. But it does not, and I come back to it time and time again for a reason, because it's just that good. Okay, I think I've made a decision about what eyeshadow palette that I want to use. And this eyeshadow palette is something that I have had wanted for a while, and then I think, I don't remember if Ulta had it on sale or it was like a whole bunch of points. So that's generally my strategy, my purchasing strategy at Ulta. If I've been wanting this certain product for a while and it comes on sale or that brand has like five to 10 times the points or you get like an, a really cool gift with purchase kind of situation, then generally I will um, take advantage of that and get my more expensive eyeshadow palettes in that in that way. And so that's how I accumulate my nicer things. So, so this is something that I did get this year and it is one of those situations. That was a really long story for me to just tell you that. I don't know why I'm talking so much. I haven't had my coffee yet this morning. <laughs> ah. I really love this eyeshadow palette because, and it's something that I wouldn't normally go for because it's cool toned. But as you see today, I'm wearing like a gray shirt. So, so part of me wants to wear not, not warm tones that I would normally gravitate towards. But this eyeshadow palette has such a really unique color story because it's, uh, one could say plain and and boring, but I like plain and boring. I know that that's what fits me and I'm okay with that. I'm experimenting with color in ways that make me feel 
motivated, inspired, but also still comfortable and it'll still feel like me. That's something that I'm really done a pretty good job about in the realm of eyeshadow palettes is I can appreciate a really cool color story but not want to go out and buy it because I know that my fantasy self wishes that I could be that person who has like you know a bunch of really super colorful eyeshadows and really good at like crazy graphic you know, Instagram worthy looks, but I'm just an everyday gal. So I'm, I try to stay rooted in that. Appreciating really cool eyeshadow palettes for what they are and the people who are really good at using them and can use them with the fervor that they deserve. <laughs> and I'm not that person. And that's okay. We're all different. The palette formula on this is very smooth, very blendable, very easy to work with in my opinion. And it's something that inspired me to continue to get more from this brand. And that's how I know that I really truly like it. When I can say, okay, I can trust you now. I can trust you brand. And now I want to see what else you can do. So now I have, um, I want other bigger one of these and then a smaller one. And I love them all so much. I have recently, but I haven't gotten it yet. And I know I'm supposed to be on a no buy. But again, this is something that I have wanted since it came out last year, maybe. Um, the end of last year. And it's the Alter Ego, it's my first Alter Ego purchase. It's the Alter Ego dupe for the Pretty Grunge palette from Huda. I love Huda's formula. That's one of my favorites. But also, I really kind of wanted that color story too because, again, it's cool toned. But it has like a purpley undertone, which I think because of my green eyes really kind of suits, suits me really well as opposed to kind of something like this where it's like super super gray I'm not sure that that super suits me but something about these do anyway um so I saw that they came out with that dupe and I immediately put it in my cart and immediately got it because I didn't really want to pay 60 70 dollars for that particular eyeshadow palette from Huda not knowing exactly if I was going to like it on myself and so I got it. And I also got another one that I had been wanting and looking at and thinking about for a really long time. And it just kind of worked out that way this time. Was the, um, I don't know what the name of it is, but it's from ABH. And it's the one that has kind of warm tones and then a pop of lilac in it. I don't have them yet, but I'm looking forward to them. Wow. So this is already like, I feel like super sparkly and very, very nice. The glitters within this particular eyeshadow palette are really fine and very good. But then I put this other one that kind of has a pink glitter on it and look at the difference in that. Look at the difference. That's just crazy. Now I'm going to be a sparkly goddess for all of my classes today. Because I teach online. Ah, oh, look at me. Let me so sparkly. I may put on a little bit of eyeliner to go along with this. And I'm just going to use an eyeliner pencil that is very, very smooth. Man, for somebody like me that's not good at eyeliner, I need an eyeliner pencil that's very smooth, very easy to work with. If I want to smudge it out, then I can. I need that. When I'm watching content creators and beauty influencers, I am always paying attention to that part. When they describe the eyeliners, does it sound like something that would really like hit with me? Okay, let me show you the thing that I like to do 
have to kind of brighten up my inner eye a little bit more and even like the inner corner. Okay. I take a high, uh, it's a brow, brow highlighter and I place it just kind of around my tear duct and I will even drag it up like that part, and I know that's not super precise, but then what you do is you uh, just kind of press it in a little bit. And I feel like that that just kind of adds a little brightness. If you're someone, if you're up close to me, then, then you'll be able to probably see it a little better than uh, farther away. It just kind of makes me feel a little more confident Especially when I'm using some gray tones and I'm already like gray all in that area anyway. Okay, so let's go for blush. I want to use, I know exactly what blush I want to use with this look. And so this is one of my favorites. It is a really unique color and I love blush a lot. And I just recently did a really big declutter where I got rid of a whole bunch of blushes, gave it to the girls yesterday, and I think that they are all super, super nice. And I think they're all really happy about the things that they were able to get. But this particular blush is a really unique color in the pan, but when it's applied on me, it looks pretty pink and that's not the color that it is in the pants so I like a little surprise with my blush <laughs> that's really a lot of fun but I also really like this blush because it's glowy and a glowy blush to me takes up two steps where I used to be a highlighter person and I used to always do highlighter I don't do highlighter every day anymore because I'm finding that a lot of my blushes already have a pretty good built-in highlighter within them and that one is definitely one of those so get you a blush that also has a little bit of glow to it and you've saved yourself a little bit of time right now I'm just kind of setting everything I'm kind of toning down that bronzer a little bit because I mean on to me it doesn't look overdone here in real life but maybe when I'm on camera with my students it might because with you guys it did next step we have the blush I might add this cheek looks a little bit less than this cheek so we're gonna put a little bit more back on the blush it really doesn't look that much I promise now for mascara I've been using a tuning mascara from the drugstore that is really really awesome and I'm also using a setting spray that is one of the aerosol setting sprays so I'm gonna do those two things and then we'll come back and talk about the lips so that tubing mascara is really great because it stays in place all day and it's very affordable so I appreciate that and the setting spray really actually does a really good job of keeping my makeup in place and locking it in. I work from home at a computer and I'm always touching my face. And for the most part, at the end of the day, my makeup is usually looking pretty good with using that setting spray. Now, I'm not, I will put on, I guess I will put on a little bit of lipstick right now for you guys, but I still need to eat breakfast and brush my teeth. So it won't stay on very long. I, oh, I was going to show it to you and I'm not going to. Um, so there's two things that I'm thinking about going with. And one of them is sort of a matte powdery type lip balm type situation. Okay, so this is it. And I really like the color on it. I feel like on something like what I'm wearing today, it kind of goes with the vibe a little bit. It's a little pinkier than I'd prefer. I might like something a little more red with this but all in all I think that it's bold and kind of like gives a pop of color on my face with all these neutral tones it has a nice vanilla scent and um overall even though it's a matte powdery finish this one does like has a nice like rub feel on my lips so I do enjoy that but also my daughter 
up some stuff from Walmart of Halloween type collection and it's one of those that is um like pH tone toning pH changing or whatever and so it's uh it, you know the color of it is like Halloween kind of creepy color so when you put it on you have this pinky look and I know some people don't like that but I kind of thought it was a lot of fun just to see what color it was going to change it has kind of a mint chocolatey flavor to it very nice not super sticky even though it's really really glossy and I really honestly think that that might be what I steal from her today and I might use that for myself today Okay, thank you so much for watching all the way to the end if you did. If you did watch all the way to the end, let me know what tips and tricks you use when you're trying not to buy new things and you want to kind of just appreciate what you have. I hope that this video was inspiring to you as I described the different products that I was using instead of telling you what they were and trying to influence you which I'm certainly not of that caliber but you know like sometimes you can be inadvertently influenced just by listening to the brands so hopefully I inspired you to take a look at the makeup that you already have in your collection and go dig something out that is similar to what I described thank you very much I really appreciate you taking time to watch me and I will see you in another video bye